วัสดีครับ and welcome to the only MMA podcast not sponsored by Manscape. Welcome to the MMA Monday. Welcome to the Funkit Pod. It's Monday, and you know what it means. <laughs> It's time to talk about what happened in MMA this past week. What happened this past weekend? Most importantly, of course, so many things to talk about. Let's just jump right into what just transpired the other day. UFC 263, Adesanya versus Vittori 2. Was it close? Did Vittori win again? <laughs> let's just discuss all those things. So let's start with the main event, right? Obviously. So Israel Adesanya um, with the walkout, ins anime inspired again, I believe. This time, I, even I didn't get it. Or even I, I also didn't get it, just like Laura Sanko didn't get it. Um, that's what she said, by the way. I'm not sh throwing shade at Laura Sanko. Laura is awesome. Um, Yeah, so Izzy comes out uh, also with, I think, paying tri tribute to his friend who got murdered in New Zealand. Um, Marm Vittori already out there, um, head clean shaven as always, um, looking like he looks with his shaven head. Um, and then they go to war for five rounds and it's a clear I am shut down, kind of. I mean, Vittori did have some offensive moments. But then again, he didn't do much with it, right? So he got Adesanya down a few times, but didn't do much with it. He got him against the cage a few times, which is just an arresting position for Adesanya. Where also then the, the funniest moment happened, of course, like Adesanya pushes Vittori down, Vittori holds on to him, nothing happens. Adesanya taps, taps his butt, grabs his butt, me too's um, Vittori, basically. It was in the fourth round, I believe. <laughs> uh, Twitter then said, some people on Twitter said, like, Vittori felt the tap, so he actually won. <laughs> um, but other than that, it was a clear, dominant 50-45 performance for Adesanya. There's no way in hell uh, Marvin Vittori could have taken this. He clearly lost the first match, but this one was even clearer. Afterwards, apparently Adesanya told him, like, man, I, I, this time I, I won, right? You, you come on, you saw it too. And apparently Vittori still thought that he won this one too. Um, during, the, during the fight, you can see or you can hear it also during the breaks, Vittori's coach, uh, Rafael Cordero, told him every single round, you lost this round, you need to start. You lost this round, you need to start. We're down 4-0, you need to let it go now. And Vittori just was not able to do what his coaches asked him to do. Um... I don't know what, what else to say. Uh, it was a nice performance by Adesanya. Adesanya wasn't really happy with it uh, afterwards by myself, but I mean, clear 5-0, so what, what do you want, right? And all, all judges gave it to him, 5-0, 50, 44, 45. So well done, job well done. Let's move on from Vittorio. Let's move on to the real challenger, that is Robert Whittaker. Right? Um, Oh, in the interview later, uh, I think a few, a few, um, I think was it Laura Sanko, was it Megan Olivi? Um, they they said they saw like Izzy showing some some wrestling skills and some some chit skills, which is yeah a little bit, but let's let's not get, go overboard with it, right? So I mean, he escaped uh, with Tori, but he also made a few strange choices then hardy explained it very well on submission radio like when um vittori was close or when vittori had him on the ground and then he had underhooks in but then he gave up the underhook to just try to scramble and he said like maybe some better fighter or some better jiu-jitsu fighter um player with he said vittori is a brown belt maybe someone with a who's a good black belt uh, would have seen that opening and would have gone for 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 the neck there from Adesanya and maybe that's something that Robert Whittaker wants to exploit um, down the road but I'm sure that Eugene Bam and Adesanya's coach also saw that and they might be working on this of course down the road anyways great performance by Adesanya um, sometimes you're watching and you're like this could go wrong this time I thought Yeah, that nothing goes wrong here, round one, and then you, you knew what's going to happen. So um, great performance, respect to the champ. Let's see what's next. He says he wants Whitaker next and ideally in New Zealand. Dana White said, uh, might I? Uh, that's, that's Thai for you can't do that. Dana White didn't speak it, say it in Thai. Uh, I just throw it in here. So uh, he said no because they're still in hardcore lockdown, so it's probably not possible to organize events, events there. All right. Let's see. He says maybe October-ish would be nice. That, that's what Alessandra said. Let's see if, if they can um, find a venue and agree on something. Okay, let's move on to the co-main event, which was like one of the highlights uh, of, of, of the day, the night. Brandon Moreno versus Davison Deister Gareth. 
Did I say that right? Figueredo, figgy, 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 can't you see? You just lost your bell to... That doesn't rhyme. Brent Moreno. Brent Moreno with the upset victory submission in round three. Rear naked choke. And how can you not be happy for Brent Moreno? He got cut by the UFC, fights his way back over the local circuit, regional circuit, whatever you call it, comes back, strings a few wins together, has this amazing fight with uh, Figueredo back in December, um, a draw, and everyone... Everyone, everyone thought this time around, because last time around was like a three weeks turnaround for Figueredo, also short notice for Moreno, but still, uh, yeah, for the full camp, Figueredo is going to kill Moreno, but Moreno was better in every single aspect of the game. Striking way faster, his jab snapped back Figueredo, Figueredo's head a few times, already thought he had him in trouble in was it the first or second round, which was really good. Um, yeah, he's faster in the scrambles, the takedown, like Moreno was so on point, it was amazing to see, he was so fast, even when Figueredo was close to a guillotine joke, which is Figueredo's like trademark submission, and Moreno find, found a way out and then eventually end up ended up on the back of uh, Figueredo and was able to sink in um, to sink in yeah well the arm around his neck and uh, squeeze it all out and then Figueredo tapped so and Figueredo to be fair all class in defeat he was hugging and celebrating Moreno raising his hand uh, having us on his arm like saying like, here that's the guy and Moreno was just so happy and he, he couldn't believe he was walking around the octagon and, like, and all of a sudden it set in and he was just crying and awesome it's just, he's such a nice guy it's, it's awesome to see that nice guys don't always finish last congratulations uh, Ren Moreno fantastic um you're the man. Viva Mexico. Viva Mexico. Um, beautiful performance. Let's hope that he continues this, those those performances, those, those showing out and becomes like the Mexican champion that, that uh, Mexico, like such a fight crazy nation uh, deserves. Congratulations, uh, Mexico. Viva Mexico. Well done, Brent Moreno. That was awesome to watch. I was actually, I was, I was no kidding. I was smiling when it, when it went down. Fantastic. Um, I was also smiling in the Coco main event. I just called it like this, even though it's not the Coco main event. Five rounds fight, Leon Edwards versus, and I do this on YouTube because you can do it on YouTube uh, for the people listening. I just um, flipped the double bird because that's what you do when you talk about Nate Nathan Diaz. Nate Diaz has came back. Leon Edwards dominated four and a half rounds. <laughs> but... So it's not, it wasn't a shutdown. So Diaz was definitely also landing stuff in between. And he was doing, he was doing the Nate Diaz stuff, like this awkward stuff, just moving sideways, staying there, showing his butt to Julian Edwards and then just exploding with some punches. Um, it was just awesome to see like Nate Diaz being back. I really enjoyed it. Um, lots of fun. He was giving different looks. But then, of course, and also, because Julian Edwards is just such, such a good fighter, such a composed fighter. And eventually, he, of course, was able to land one of his dangerous elbows, split uh, Diaz open, blood everywhere. Where that's what you know from Nate Diaz because Diaz is bleeding like crazy every time he fights of course and just when you thought it would, Edwards would be cruising to, to a to a I don't know it wasn't a shutdown but to a like definitely to a UD decision uh, after in like the last two minutes of the fifth round blood everywhere then Nate Diaz just lets it all out and he just he rocks him with a one two and then then he does the Diaz thing he's like I got you and then he moves forward and then he just lands a few more and then you can actually say Edwards saved by the bell 30 seconds longer one, one minute longer no hesitation in the beginning no no pointing by Diaz maybe he would have gotten Edwards out of there but um, so of course uh, Edwards still got the UD but Diaz did what Diaz did and the crowd went nuts. It was amazing. Like when he landed those punches, the crowd was so loud. I was so loud in front of my computer. It's like, oh my God. And of course, it's good that Edwards won because he's the logical, it's the next step towards title contention and so on. And who knows how long Nate, Nate is going to fight. But seeing Diaz doing Diaz stuff was just amazing. And it just throws you back to the I'm not surprised mother ever uh, moment. And it was so close that he could have said it again. Later in the interview, he's like, 
yeah, man, Leon Edwards won, whatever, but I mean, I'm still the better fighter. <laughs> and Brett Okamoto from ESPN, or was that Brett Okamoto? I don't know. Someone at ESPN said, Nate Diaz, if it's a fight to the death, Nate Diaz would win every time. And it's true, right? Dana White said in the press conference, next time Nate Diaz is going to ask for a six round fight. <laughs> it was, but it was fun. It was really good. Congratulations to Leon Edwards. I mean, yeah, well done. Uh, moves on to bigger and better things now. Hopefully, eventually, maybe after Colby um, takes out Kamaru, <laughs> don't add me, or the other way around. But yeah, let's see. Um, congratulations to Leon Edwards. And I hope Nate said he wants to fight again. I hope, I hope he fights again because it's just so exciting to watch him fight. It's exciting, it's exciting to see the fans go crazy. So I want more of that. That's the UFC feel. That's the just bleed feel right there. Thank you, Nate Diaz. Um, okay. Also, thank you to Damien Maya because that might have been his last match. According to Dana White, this was his last match on his contract, I believe. And um, so he lost to Bilal Muhammad. Congratulations to uh, Bilal. Um, yeah, well done to Bully. Um, it was a clear UD for him. Maya tried to take him down, I think, 22 times or so. And then uh, he was Bilal was just jumping on one leg back against the fence and defending it to take the takedown. So well done. Great balance. I could not do this of reason back to that um, clear clear UD decision nothing crazy but very well done um, to Muhammad who's now then um, I'm guessing waiting for a top 5 opponent, opponent next um, I assume maybe top 7 but definitely up the rank so well done congratulations and if if that was it for Damien Meyer um, and Dana White said that might have been it um, obrigado Thank you very much, Damien Meyer. It was a joy watching you fight in the UFC. I'm sure he's going to stick around somewhere. Um, yeah, it was. I'm not the super jiu-jitsu nerd, or black belt, and so on. But even I appreciate Damien Meyer's game. So, uh, yeah, congratulations! It was awesome. It was also awesome. It was. The first fight on the main card, Paul Craig versus Jamal Hill. Jamal Hill was like 8-0 and until then. Paul Craig is 14-4, and but has like a super long undefeated streak now. Um, and he just pulled guard. And he... Oh, I can't even explain it. He, oh, there was... Uh, what he did with like Jamal Hill arm. And respect for Jamal Hill for not, not tapping was crazy. Uh, his... I mean, in, in the end, it turned out it wasn't broken, but it looked like it's broken everywhere. It was just dangling around. Ugh, crazy um so then eventually because tamale didn't tap and the ref didn't stop so he pulled it down and was just then punching him like while he has him in the submission <laughs> and then that's how i got stopped by a tko um but it was crazy and props to Jamal Hill of course of being a tough sob but props for paul craig for this jiu-jitsu game like the transitions they looked like in a movie um so fantastic paul craig let's see what comes next? I didn't understand a, sing, a single uh, single thing that he said after was an interview. Just as with Leon Edwards, I had no clue what Leon Edwards was saying. Sorry, um, but yeah, looking forward to what what comes next. So it was cool. The prelims were also cool. I don't have that much time in this weekly podcast, unfortunately. But great card, great event, great fans, lots of fun to watch. Um, thank you, UFC, for this. That was awesome. And then this weekend we had also had Bellator happening. Yeah, I know Bellator also happened and. Yaroslav Amosov, Amosov, defeats, defeated Douglas Lima, and that was also a shuttle. It was a wrestling clinic. Not that exciting, um, but maybe Douglas Douglas, Douglas Lima wants to learn some wrestling. <laughs> Says the guy with no wrestling, but that was... <sighs> That's not what I used to see from Douglas Lima, to be honest, but um, I don't know. So congratulations to the new champ. Congratulations, congratulations, Yaroslav Amosov. He did what he had to do. Did it convincingly. Um, so yeah, well done, I guess. Disappointed in Lima, though. You thought you would have like a great champ there. Hmm. Also congratulations to uh, Jason Jackson, uh, who defeated Paul Semtex Daly, also via UD. 30-27 um, on all, all the three scores, scorecards, I believe. So clear decision for Jason Jackson. Was waiting for, for Daly to just like be the old daily but he couldn't get it going or Jason Jackson just shut it down basically um, so congratulations on this 
Congratulations also on Aaron Pico to extend his winning streak to four now, I believe. He defeated Aiden Lee uh, via Anaconda Choke, of course, in round three. And Pico dominated the fight. It was really nice to see. So he's really coming into his own. It eventually all seems to be working out, taking things a bit slower, improving his game everywhere, not buying into his own hype too much. Um, so that was well done. He rattled him a few times. He threatened the anaconda a few times before and eventually he got it in in round three so congratulations Aaron Pico I'm excited to see where, where he's going so that was well done and well deserved so looks like he's doing everything right there okay we also had uh, something at the PFL happening Clarissa Shields debuted the goat the wimp the female boxing goat um, debuted in um, MMA and did not look good. She did not look good for the majority of the time, but then eventually she got the upper hand and then grounded and pounded her opponent out, uh, like side control kind of thing, like from the side ground and pound. Um, I'm not sure if Clarissa Shields just overpowered her or if her opponent thought, hey, I showed that I'm better, now let's do the job. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm just... I'm so saying I'm not saying that. But congratulations, Cla congratulations, Clarissa Shields. Um, on, on to the next one. Let's see how she does. So respect for her for taking actually the chance and um, going into MMA, right? So uh, lots of boxers just talk. She does it. Um, congratulations. Let's see where she goes from here. Um, we also had a one event, one. Oh, God, I forgot whatever full throttle or something like this. Um, the the only actually exciting fight that I was excited about was a mom called Patch Patty in the Academy uh, versus Elias Mahmoudi. And as I predicted correctly last week, uh, mom called Patch took this via UD and now he's calling for Rod Tang. He wants Rod Tang. If he fights Rod Tang, he's gonna die though. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was a decent fight. Um, bit disappointed by, by Mahmoudi. Uh, I thought he's gonna, I don't know. Give Monkle Pet more, more problems. But Monkle Pet, congratulations. Let's see if he can actually get the Rod Tang fight. And let's see if one championship is actually going to put on some, some fight cards that are exciting again. Just saying. All right. Uh, what else happened? Um, well, Ariel Havani is saying goodbye to ESPN. I think this Monday is the last time oh, that we can hear DC and Helvani on ESPN. So goodbye, Ariel Helvani. Um, I made lots of fun of you. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. Um, alas, Ariel. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyways, uh, everyone is he's gonna go to something bigger, better that makes him more money, obviously, and he's gonna announce it pr pretty soon, I'm sure, so there's nothing to worry about. Um, take care, Ariel. Yeah, that's it. He's gonna stick around. Everyone's like, oh my god, I'm so sad. He's gonna stick around. And we're never gonna get rid of Ariel Helvani. Oh my. All right. Um, what's happening next week? Nothing much. No events for Bellator. Bellator is in two weeks. No events for one. One is gonna start in July again. But we have a UFC fight night. And the UFC fight night sees Chan Sung Jung, the Korean zombie, return against Dan Ige. Dan Ige called out a Korean zombie. Korean zombie said, you, call, you say my name three times, I'll be there. This should be awesome. I can't wait for this. Um, two really good stand-up fighters. Going to be fantastic. Um, I, I'm a zombie fan for life, uh, even though I really like Dan Ige and I'm like all for Hawaii and so on, but uh, how I stand up. So I'm not mad if Dan Ige takes it because he's really cool and he's got a great fighting style, but I mean zombie for life. Okay, then we also have Alexei Olinik versus Sergei Spivac. And Alexei Olinik is hitting his prime right now at 747 years old. <laughs> I'm taking Alexei Olinik via submission, of course. <laughs> All right, we also have Tim Means versus Danny Roberts. Um, I don't know much about Danny Roberts, to be honest, just yet. So I'm saying Tim Means, obviously takes this one we have Marlon Cheaton Vera Cheeto Vera versus Davy Grant which was hilarious um, on the Believe You Me podcast both of them called in and like the virtual press conference Davy Grant just being too nice Marlon Vera tried to talk some shit but Davy Grant just being way too nice um, I'm not sure so they they Marlon Vera is always like up and down and, and you think now he's hating his stride Davy Grant looked really good in his last few outings um 
I'm assuming though maybe Marlon is just a bit too experienced right now so I would say Marlon Vera takes this one because he should be really motivated to like bounce back and just go for on one more run so I'm thinking Marlon takes this but if David Grant would take it I would not be that surprised and then lastly we also see Matt Brown still Matt Brown versus Diego Lima I think Diego Lima was last time around when he was fighting um, Bilal Muhammad I think that's the last time I remember he almost won by leg kick chaos but then um, succumbed to to Bilal but to Bilal's wrestling um, so this should be a fun stand-up battle um, as long as Matt Brown is fighting I'm not gonna pick against Matt Brown of course so Matt Brown takes this one all right those are my predictions um as always, bet the house. My predictions were all right this weekend. <laughs> Don't go back and check. Uh, just believe me. Uh, let me know what you think on social media, the comments, or via email, funkitpod at gmail.com. Until then, stay safe, take care, and I'll see you soon. Sorry, Carl.